It's Fitter Friday. I'm Thomas Campbell, Master Club Fitter at Second Swing Minnetonka, here with another fellow Master Fitter, James Tracy. Morning, Thomas. How are you, man? Doing good. Here to uh, test the Mizuno JPX 919 tour head. And, and I the got the Strixon 785Z iron, so this will be a cool little head-to-head -head combo here. It's going to be an interesting test. We yeah. get a lot of golfers coming in talking about these two. I would say these are the top brands in irons in terms of sales, but both of these irons have a very deep, kind of almost like a cult following. You know, Mizuno is legendary. Strixon's a definitely uh, a, a, a budding brand with irons. The last three generations of forged irons have been really good, so I'm really interested to see how these two irons compare, you know, with your golf swing and kind of what your feedback is as you test them. Sounds good. Well, let's get after it. Let's do it. All right. Okay, my friend. All let's right. do this little head-to-head -head battle here. Let's start with Mizuno. Yep. So this is JPX 919 Tour, made famous by uh, the Brooks Kepkas of the world, right? Kind of the modern Mizuno uh, player's iron, right? Yep. Looks pretty nice. I like it. I think the satin finish is, I, I prefer that over the MPs. I'm not a big like glare, super traditional, like throwback type of player. Yep. So I <laughs> like the JPX model from Mizuno a lot more okay. personally, but yep. you know, Again, you sometimes run into the, M the Mizuno guy that maybe is less enamored with the changes that they've made with this line. So what I like is it, that way the Mizuno aficionado has options. They can stay with something that's more nostalgic and MP, or they can try something with a little more of that modern flair, yeah. you know, kind of with the sharper lines. It's and definitely got a little, uh, it's definitely not as, um, I don't know, not a shiny, I guess. Yeah, correct. Yeah, yeah. Yep. So I'm, yep. my irons I've played in the past have been pretty shiny, but yep. looks pretty nice looking down at it. It's not, yeah, it looks really, really good, actually. Those, like you said, those lines actually look pretty clean. So. My bald head, I got to shine as it is. So I, I, like, <laughs> I like anything with less flair, you know, typically in my life. So Yeah. All maybe right. That, maybe that's where my preference comes from. I hadn't thought of that, <laughs> but that makes a lot more sense. <laughs> All right. Jokes aside, let's see how these things test. So let's hit four with the Mizuno. Okay. And then we'll jump to the Strixon, and then we'll kind of go back to the Mizuno, kind of go round robin here. Is this supposed to be like a blade, or I mean, it doesn't look like it's tiny, com you know, compared to other blades that I've I've may hit in the past. So yeah, it's no, still I think, this guy, I think gotta despite go. the tour moniker, yep. it definitely has some forgiveness there. I yep. think even as a you know a ten handicap, you can look down and feel some confidence that you don't have to be perfect there. Yeah. So it has the right amount of you know kind of old school look, thin top line, but enough size to, to give even a, a not so perfect ball striker some confidence. Yeah, yeah, no, it actually, it looks pretty look, good looking down at it. So. That sounds solid. This morning we are throwing in uh, Project X LZ 6.5 on both heads, 125 grams. It's a profile that you've always liked. Yep. Played. It's the shaft that I have in my current clubs right now. Yep. yep. Kind of hides in between a, a stiff and an X frequency a little bit. Gives yep. you some weight, smooth feel. Yeah. It's an easy fit, that one. I felt solid too. Mm -hmm. Now with Mizuno running just a little flat. Yeah, that's, that's actually interesting. Um, I left those two How the do right. you normally play your lie angle and your irons, Tom? So I usually have mine pretty close to standard lie angle. So um, like 62, 62, Yeah, five? 62 and 62 and a half. Yep. Okay. Yep. okay. Yep. So that's the first thing I did notice those first two shots is normally I do play a little bit of a more of a draw with my irons. Okay. Those thing two just basically stay dead straight, straight to the right. Yep. Yeah. So we're talking, so. this, this head might measure quarter to a half degree flatter than kind of your gamer specs. Yep. Yeah, that's actually really interesting right there. Yeah. Dead straight. Can't go wrong with that. Oh hum. Yep. Just a but slight you're little push. Those, you're swinging those with the expectation that that ball is going to fall back. Correct. Yeah, I a haven't quite adjusted yet. <laughs> yeah. So I don't think that's a knock to the head. I think that's yeah. just that's just where lie angle does play a role. I think yeah. when, when golfers are comparing Mizuno, you know, head to head against other brands, you know, especially if you're using a fitting head or you're using their factory 
settings, the lie angle on Mizuno is typically just a tiny bit flatter. So that's just something to consider yeah. as you're testing irons for sure. Yeah, I definitely noticed that obviously my, my club path is about three to four degrees in the out. So yeah. naturally it's gonna start a little further if I don't call, turn that thing over. Exactly, so, yeah. exactly. No, that's it, one more. All, All three right. of those pretty solid though. They felt pretty solid. Crunch. Crunch. Oh, ball was outside in the hitting area there, Thomas. What are you doing? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> it felt really solid again. It, it was good. Yeah, yep. you know, that, yep. that screen just means, well, Trackman didn't capture every yep. single I might have put point. the golf ball just on the edge of the hitting spot there. So. Yeah, or it's yep. just giving you, giving you some grief. Yep. Right? Still usable data there. Yep, no, it was still accurate distance. Totally. Okay, now let's jump on back to our Strixon iron here. Kind of a cult classic, these Strixons. Every year they surprise me with their performance. Not always as much in demand, yep. but every year a little bit more. And certainly for players that just like clean, fully forged, you know, it is a rock solid iron for sure. It is a really rock solid. Even like their, you know, the 585 is forged also for, yep. for a game improvement iron. That's totally. That's a nice. Sell a lot more of those. Yep. Just Typical handicap yep. players that we'll see, you know, in fittings. You know, the 585 is truly a, a game changer for a lot of folks that yep. want forged iron but need some forgiveness. Correct. Yeah. Um, this is a 32 degree loft, I believe. Okay. Yep. Um, so you're. So you're telling me should maybe go possibly a little bit further than the. It's possible. Yep. I'd say more predictable. It should theoretically spin a little less. Okay. Yep. But we'll see based on your strike and how you swing it. But Sounds good. Keeping the shaft the same, same length. 37 inches, which yep. is standard for you. Well, that felt, felt really solid. And then this iron is, is adjusted to, um, or set to a 62 and a half degree lie angle. So okay. a little bit more similar to what you are playing. Yep. And obviously there's that ball flight falling back to the <laughs> left a little bit. You that was really that. interesting there. Yeah, yeah, you hammered that one for sure. Yeah, that thing was crushed. Yeah, a lot of ball speed and definitely saw that spin, you know, scrub down pretty quick. Talk to me about the size of the heads in comparison. Strixon seem similar, larger, smaller? Um, if anything, it seems like it's slightly larger, kind of heel to toe. I agree. Um, otherwise, Looks pretty pretty similar. Say so maybe the top line with the Mizuno maybe slightly thinner. Okay. Um, but both of them appealing to me, kind of the clubs that I would like to play as opposed to, you know, players' irons but have a little more forgiveness to them. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. A little bit of that extra muscle and meat down there. Yep. I wouldn't be surprised that we do hit this a little further. Yeah. You know, well, they are tested head to head a lot, but they don't really perform the same. Correct. Yeah. That was a better swing. Nice. That was a little bit pulled. That was better. Very interesting with the shape here, Thomas. Yeah, it is. I mean, that's maybe a little bit more of an exaggerated look to where I'd normally play Momia, maybe draw it about five yards. Mm -hmm. That one's moving pretty good, actually. Mm -hmm. so. Yeah, but big, big difference right there. Obviously, the Mizuno stayed basically dead straight, if anything, to the right. Yep. Strix on, able to turn over. Well, that would be interesting is let's go on the second date with yep. both, and let's see if the patterns stay more similar or maybe you're you know knowing you maybe you just were a little more determined to, <laughs> to turn one over there on those last couple swings it's totally possible i've seen you do that before so we'll load these back up same same feature so back to four more swings with mizuno
Interesting. All right, let's try and turn this one over. <laughs> that was a better swing. That's probably the best swing that I've put together with uh, this clubs. Well, Kay. both clubs actually so far. So I was you were the most proud of that yeah. move. Kay. That was more yeah, was what good I path. Would yeah, was a great typically path. see with slight little draw ball flight. Kay. That was also pretty good. You know, we're learning a little bit about not only how these heads compare, but how lie angle plays a little bit of a role. Yeah, I mean, even if it's only half a degree or a degree, it's mm -hmm. for some reason I this one doesn't want to go left for me. Yep. All right, back to the red pattern of the Strixon for a few more. All right, kind of take this one out on a second uh, on a second trip. See what we think. It's pretty noticeable, actually. I can even though it's only two degrees of loft, that I can notice it looks like there's less loft on this club. Yeah. Fabulous. That was just absolutely yeah. ten. That was nice there. Yep. That felt good too. So that's where with the head design of the Strixon, a flatter lie angle might be more advantageous for you here. Yep. Working with the shaft, working with the swing weight, those types of things to try to create a little bit less movement to the left. Um, whereas the Mizuno, because of the different lie angle, because of the different you know, toe to heel ratio, you're gonna have to create maybe a different lie angle to make that head fall the way that you want to. So Correct. So yeah. you can't always pigeonhole yourself and say, hey, I'm <laughs> always standard lie angle, yeah. I'm always one up. Well, because brands are different, heads are different, ball flight is different. You wanna use lie angle to complement kind of the delivery that you have with the club. And mm -hmm. you know, even irons can, cause you to set up a little bit differently and how you present the ball, yeah. the club to the ball can change. So I'm definitely noticing a big difference in patterns between these two clubs for sure. Yeah, Obviously you've got are. that grouping of all those red ones up there yep. and then all those yellow ones down there. Obviously you got one outlier per club there, but yep. it's pretty yep. obvious that one's yeah. turning over and one's the same staying difference. straight. Yeah, yeah, for you, there's no question. Yeah. There's no question. That felt good too. The last couple generations of Strixon have been um, popularly low spinning and quick. Yeah. So, I mean, that's a testament to that head design for sure. You want more of this one? Yeah, I like it. Yeah, very Great. nice. So just for the sake of uh, good readable data, we're going to eliminate kind of the two outliers from that test. And you kind of see the typical cluster yep. um, that we're seeing with both. Very similar in terms of the size, but divergent in terms of where they're going and how they're getting there for sure. So we run this down into the averages with about the same club head speed, you know, give or take a mile, half mile per hour. We're seeing a big jump in ball speed from a Zuno to Strixon. So almost four miles per hour full with the Strixon. So some of that's maybe the loft, yep. some of that's head size, some of that's just centeredness of contact. There's a couple of things that contribute to that. Okay. Yep. But what I like is that, you know, where it's a lot of times irons that are faster come inconsistently with that ball speed. You know, think of a maximum distance iron. Sometimes it's hot and sometimes it's not. And then you get big swings in ball speed. Strixon was very tidy on the same amount of strikes. Yeah, it was at, a little more you know, consistent. 1.1 1 .1 deviation versus 1.5, both phenomenal. So it's faster and more consistent. Yep, so, by, yep. by a hair, yep, yep, for sure. We saw you know, similar peak trajectories. So even with a little less loft, the Strixon was flying about the same height as the Mizuno, 
despite the fact that there was about 700 RPMs difference in spin head to head. Yep. Now some of that I would argue is the starting line and the curve that you got with the Strixon. It was starting at the target and curving away from the target, whereas the Mizuno was starting right and just staying there. So even if they were going, even with the same head, you know, a pull draw versus kind of a straight, the dread, that dreaded straight push, yep. there's going to be a big difference in spin. Usually two degrees of loft is not going to be 700, 700 RPM. Yeah. But because of, you couple that with the ball flight, and that's where you start to see those things stretch apart yep. quite a bit. Um, but again, it was really consistent, right? Spin deviations less than 200 RPMs, which is phenomenal. That just speaks to your ball striking, right? Yep. Tricks on in this test, both the spin rate and the height were more consistent than the Mizuno on the same amount of swings, right? Yep. Um, so really a lot of check marks going for the Strixon. If you were craving some distance, you were craving a little more of a boring flight. And then in your world, if you were craving a ball that was falling a little bit more to the left, I think from in the fitting process, we would try to re-engineer both of those options a little bit deeper, maybe mess around with the shaft to see how we could influence the right and the left and the face angle. Certainly dive into lie angles lie angle, for yeah. sure. I think both heads, because they perform a little bit different uh, at their current lie angle, you know, would require some, some fine tuning there to give you exactly what you wanted. Yep. But you know, comparing them apples to apples with the same shaft with the same length, you know, big differences. There are almost 12 yards difference between the Mizuno and the Strixon coming yeah, mainly big, big from ball speed right and spin. Yeah. Right. So even with that Strix on that was drawing, obviously it had a little less spin. You know, I was stopping within about seven to eight yards, so I still had decent stopping power with, right. the, with the seven iron. So, Correct. Yeah. yeah. Good landing angle. I mean, yeah. as long as you're over 50, we're comfy. Yeah. You know, at 53, 51, whereas 4,800 RPMs of spin does sound a little low. Mm -hmm. You know, if you weren't falling as hard to the left, as long as you're, if you're at 128 peak for trajectory and you're landing at 52 degrees, maybe a four iron doesn't snug up to the pin is what like you'd like to but in the yep. seven iron that's still tremendous stopping power correct that that lower spin is just creating more distance you know essentially yep so you know what i also thought was interesting is if we look at your attack angle and your path <laughs> with both clubs <laughs> both, I, yeah, identical. almost identical yeah so you really weren't swinging the strix on differently in terms of how you were presenting the club dynamically yep. to the ball but you were creating you know a more closed club face whether that was the lie angle or whether it was just the, way just it the looks head down. design, yeah. or there's your confidence with it. You know, you're about two degrees more open with the Mizuno in terms of your face angle relative to the Strixon. And you know, players with your speed, you know, that does create you know a good 15 yards right and left. And that's Correct, yeah. also what was contributing to the pattern. I think when you square the, pa the face to your path, like you were doing with the Strixon a little bit better, you're going to get more ball speed. It's less of a glancing blow. Yep. If the Mizuno was slightly open to the path, then you get a little bit of that glancing hit that creates some spin and that also creates a little loss in ball speed. So, you know, the Strixon was, you were, you were just juicing it, you yeah, know, it was, it was really square, really flush, turning over a little more than we like, but yep. certainly creating some data that's kind of fun for a seven iron. Yeah, a 193 carry for seven iron is pretty solid for me. Yeah. Especially for a club that essentially not really a game for nine either, so, mm -hmm. you know. Yeah. We've seen some other tests that I've done with more game room irons. Yeah, they can carry that far, but this club's still got 32 degrees loft on it. Still, you know, still consider this a player's iron. Yeah. And yeah, it's pretty impressive right there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think for those folks that maybe don't need as much of that distance help, or maybe want to bat, maybe they do battle a left miss. They feel like their irons turn over a lot, or they don't like to see offset. You know, the Mizuno iron Mizuno might be a, be a winner option, there yeah. for sure. Yeah. Comparing the two at two degrees difference in loft is a little unfair to expect them to go the same distance. Correct. But if you're heading into a store, you're heading into a fitting, thinking that those two irons are comparable, thinking that they're going to you know, pump out the same data, you know, clearly they won't. You know, they definitely perform a lot different, even though we do lump them into a similar category. Yeah. Yeah. No, I think this is all great, great data. Yeah. How about from a feel standpoint? I mean, if you're, you know, data aside, you know, in terms of just mm -hmm. the strike, the quality of the sound, you know, the look, you know, give me some feedback there. What did you think? Um, Feel-wise, they were both pretty soft off the club face, both nice forged feel. Um, it felt like the Strixon just had maybe slightly more juice yeah. behind it a little bit. For sure. Um, 
the Mizuno felt really nice and soft off the club face, but it just felt like it maybe just, you know, just a little bit softer feel. That, that was kind of the only difference I noticed. Mm -hmm. And that makes yeah. sense based on the materials that they use. And then I think the ball speed, you know, there's a juice right there. I mean, you're feeling the ball leaving the face with some hustle with that Strix on, so that makes yeah. sense for sure. Yeah. Very cool. Yeah. Interesting test. Um, love to dive in deeper and, you know, <laughs> yeah. do some lie angle tests and shaft tests. Maybe we'll do that on a separate day to see how, how good we can make those irons for you. Sounds good. Thanks, awesome. James. Yep. Well, James, we got to hit both the Strixon and Mizuno Ironheads. Um, really, actually, pretty interesting data here. It was. Yep, yep. Direction. First off, starting with direction, what we noticed was Mizuno with maybe a slightly flatter lie. That thing wasn't going left for me. Yeah, it wasn't. And yep. I think that the consistency, the ball fight, all the numbers were fantastic with the Mizuno. You know, not to be outshadowed by the Strixon. I, mean, I think a lot of people watching this video are going to think, oh my gosh, how could I not pass up the Strixon in terms of the ball speed and the lower spin? and Sometimes in an iron, that's what you want. Sometimes yep. players don't aren't looking for a lower spin, or they aren't looking for the iron that goes the furthest. So and that's why when you go into a fitting or you're looking at purchasing irons, you really want to establish, you know, first off, what are your goals when I'm looking at new clubs? And I think the Mizuno and the Strix Center are both going to offer players kind of a unique set of um, differences in performance, look, feel, all those things. But uh, we definitely noticed that they aren't the same iron, right? There's Correct. definitely yeah. pros and cons to both. Yeah. Um, and a lot of really cool data there. Nice job, Thomas. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. And we'll see you guys next time on Fitter Friday.